Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. In just a few days, I will be heading off to Florida to fish Lake Okeechobee to start my tournament season. I cannot wait to get out of the Wisconsin winter, get down south, and hopefully start catching some big bass. And really what I'm doing is just a lot of prep work, getting tackle ready, getting baits ready, and just trying to do my homework and use my past experience to make main strategies for when I get down to Florida. Because Florida fishing, it really is its own separate beast. And if you're not familiar with it, it can be a lot more difficult than it sounds like. I think the perception is you go to Florida, you catch lots of bass, you catch lots of big bass. The reality is if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you're looking for, you can struggle mightily. Like the lakes are not necessarily just full of bass. So I've got here several key points that I want to stress. If you're heading to Florida or if you happen to live in Florida and you're looking for a little bit of help. Now, each of these things are, you know, their own separate points, but there is a ton of value that goes into each one. And if you can take them all and put them into one specific area, the chances are that you're going to find an area that's a very productive spot. So, Let's get into those. Before I do, I want to remind you that if you like this type of content, you might want to check out the one-on-one -on -one virtual uh, virtual lessons as well as the lake breakdowns that I do through fishthemoment.com. Each of those are geared towards helping you catch fish on your local lakes. I'll put the link in the video description for you so that you can check that out if that interests you. So every time I go to a tournament body of water, I like to do my homework. I like to know when I get there, what am I going to be looking for? And I've been to Florida enough times at this point to know what I need to be looking for. So there's a couple of things I want to point out. I'm not going to say that these are misconceptions, but a lot of times people just lump Florida into its own category. And because you're in Florida, you have to do it this way. One of those has to do with your fishing line. Most people would say that if you're in Florida, you got to go with braided line. And I'm here to tell you that that's true to a point, but not necessarily all the time. And what I mean by that is if you're punching mats or fishing the heaviest vegetation that's out there, you probably should be using braided line because the braided line will help get those big fish out of the thick cover. And I'm telling you, if you haven't been to Florida before and you live up in my neck of the woods, like Wisconsin fishing, Minnesota fishing, a lot of similarities to Florida, except everything is bigger and thicker in Florida. Meaning we've got bulrushes, we've got lily pads, we've got all the same stuff. But you go down there and it's like everything is just huge. Everything is bigger and thicker. So just because you might be able to get away with 20 pound fluorocarbon fishing line in Wisconsin flipping into lily pads or cattails, you might not be able to get away with that down south in Florida, especially if you start tangling with six, eight, 10 pound bass. So yes, I agree with the fact that braided line is very important in certain circumstances. But if you are out fishing a hydrilla flat and you're fan casting, in my opinion, you're gonna get more bites if you fish fluorocarbon line instead of braid. Uh, you know, if you're swimming a swimming worm, whether that's a zoom speed worm or a Berkeley boss worm, whatever it is, I still think you're better off fishing a fluorocarbon line versus your braided line. Same thing goes with topwaters. If you're not fishing really thick cover with a topwater bait, to me, I'm going with monofilament versus braid. Now, I know there's a lot of Florida fishermen out there that will completely disagree with me. They'll, they're going to say I'm crazy, but that's really what it comes down to. And I would add that there's a lot of baits out there that are made specifically for fishing the thickest cover out there. I'm gonna use dirty jigs as an example. You look at their swim jigs, they've got their finesse swim jig, a regular swim jig, and their heavy cover swim jig. The heavy cover swim jig's got a huge, big, stout hook in it, which is made for fishing down in the thickest of cover. If you're using that bait, braid is probably important. But if you're using the regular swim jig, you don't have to be throwing braid with it. You drop down to fluorocarbon, you can get away just fine. You're not gonna bend that hook out. So the point I'm saying is your line choice doesn't have to just be braid. You can choose the correct baits based on the line that you're using. And I'm here to tell you that in my opinion, you will get more bites if you're not using a braided line. 
Those fish are so accustomed to braided line that if you can get away with fluorocarbon, you probably might want to think about doing that. So that's the first thing about Florida. Don't think you got to do exactly what everyone's telling you to do in Florida. The second thing has to do with weather. You know, Florida is one of the places where there truly are very defined waves of fish. You know, you get a big spawning wave that comes in, they vacate, a couple weeks later, a new one comes in, and generally speaking, that's dictated by weather. Weather is a major, major driving factor in Florida, more so than any other place I've been in the country, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the lakes change so much based on those fronts, meaning, you know, a lot of them floating vegetation, you get a bad storm, it can rip it out, it can, it can make it muddy, it can push cooler water or warmer water into areas because most of those lakes are so shallow that the water doesn't have anywhere else to go but be, to be moved around versus, you know, a big reservoir where you have 100 feet of water. You're not getting that much water push, being pushed from one area to another based on a front that blows through. So Florida fish are very much dictated by it, and the waves of fish are dictated by the cold fronts really more than anything. You get a cold front come in, that sets up the next wave of fish to come in. So... If you do get a cold front, one of the best areas you can fish is the thickest cover around. A lot of times I think people would assume the fish go deep, but if the fish were already shallow, they're going to look for the thickest cover available. Could be a thick clump of hydrilla, could be a thick clump of cattails, could be a hyacinth mat. The point is, a lot of times you're better off fishing the thickest cover around. Now, if you have a warming trend, at that point, a lot of times those fish vacate that thickest cover and they go start setting up in bedding areas. So therefore, you might be better off casting versus, say, flipping or pitching into heavy mats. Uh, even so, you know, especially if you have maybe a cold front just went through and you've got a sunny day, a lot of times people just assume because it's sunny out, the fish pull into the mats. But the reality is sometimes they don't go into those mats. Even if you have cooler temperature, they'll still pull out to absorb the sunlight directly into them. So the point that I'm making is be very cognizant of what the weather conditions are. And one day to the next can change drastically based on what's going on with the weather. So you gotta pay attention to that. The next has to do with finding the fish. Meaning in Florida, you generally do not catch one or two fish in an area. Yes, you can do that, but when you find a good area, there are a ton of fish in those areas, and it seems like they just kind of keep coming to you. So the key here is to continue to move around until you find fish. Don't just think because you caught one here or one over there that that's a good area. Generally speaking, you'll find a bunch of fish. And because we're talking about waves in the springtime, you know, you may pull into an area and find that you're catching a ton of little males. Well, two days later, it may be a ton of big females mixed in. And it can go the other way too. You could pull into an area and be catching a lot of females and males in an area. And then, you know, two days later, it's all back to males because the females move back out. So the point is, you got to find the right areas. One of the keys to being successful in Florida is to find areas that are holding fish versus fishing areas that don't hold fish. And the, and the thing with Florida is, a lot of times the lakes all look the same. You cannot tell the difference between an area that should have fish and an area that doesn't have fish, meaning they all look the same. Why they're over here versus over here, you don't know. And they may be over here one day and the next day they're over there. So you got to move around. But once you find the fish, don't be afraid to kind of camp out in those areas. The next one has to do with water uh, quality, water clarity. Florida is very much dictated by clear water again, and that clear water isn't necessarily like gin clear. Most of the time you're talking about tonic, uh, tannic colored water. So it's a tannic stained water, it's rust colored or coffee colored, but there's still a lot more clarity to that than the muddy areas. You know, on a lake like Lake Okeechobee, that main lake of Lake Okeechobee is generally very muddy. Uh, not saying there's not fish out there, they're just hard to catch because of the water clarity. And when you start moving into the areas that have vegetation, you may have areas where that muddy water pushed into, and that can be tough fishing. But you're usually going to have better fishing in areas that have better water quality or water clarity than areas that are muddy. So that's another key 
to fishing Florida. And going back to finding the fish, a lot of times when you're in those areas, you can see the life that's in those areas, meaning you might see bluegill and shad that are swimming around mixed in with the bass. Areas that have a lot of bass gen generally tend to have a lot of life. Areas that don't have much bass gen tend to not have much other life in it. So keep that in mind as well. The last thing I'm going to point out is that everyone thinks of Florida as thick grass, you know, weeds, thick vegetation fishing, but don't be afraid to look offshore. Don't be afraid to go outside of those grass lines and start looking for brush piles, uh, shell bars, maybe outside weed lines. A lot of the best fish are going to be set up and staging offshore before they move into spawn. So if you can find the areas where they're staging to move in and where they're staging post-spawn as they're moving back out to the main lake, those areas can be 100% winning areas in areas where you can catch them just a lot easier making the same cast over and over again. So if the grass game and shallow water game isn't necessarily your strong suit, you prefer to fish offshore, by all means, Florida can be won offshore. And in fact, more and more lately, I feel like it is being won offshore. So keep that in mind when you head down there. You don't have to get into the thick stuff if you don't want to. But those are five huge keys to fishing Florida. If you can take all five of those key points and find an area that fits all of them, meaning lots of life, clear water, uh, you know, you're using the right equipment, there's just, uh, you know, fish coming to you in certain waves, generally, that's going to be a good area to fish. And one thing about Florida is a lot of times when you do find an area that they're using, they'll continue to use those areas year after year after year. Now, if you hit it when there's not a wave of fish in, there's not going to be any fish. But generally speaking, those waves keep going to the same areas. So once you find a few areas that have fish, generally speaking, you can hit those areas at other times throughout the year and in the upcoming years and catch them as well. So hopefully this was helpful. I can't wait to get down there. I love fishing Florida. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.